So it seems just as quickly as we get a story talking about the wonderful things with Tesla, the driving experience, how much fun it is, full self-driving, technology changes, advancements, even changing the way that you buy a car. Quickly followed behind it is a story talking about reliability issues with Tesla, problems with the cars, panel gaps, Consumer Reports ratings, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So I've had my Tesla Model Y for over a year, and I want to talk, dive into some of the issues that we've seen, some of the things that maybe look out for when you're getting one, and then just overall experiences. So sit back, relax, you guys are watching The Tall Tesla Guy. So this just recently came out. It was a Consumer Reports talking about the the reliability of the Tesla Model Y, and almost to the point where they were saying that they won't even recommend it. Now I know that people talk about Consumer Reports, people talk about Car and Driver, people talk about these auto magazines as being sponsored or you know, advertised with or even owned by some of the big three auto manufacturers, and that's probably true. I'm not gonna dive into that today, but just talking about the article in general. They actually gave the Tesla Model Y a reliability rating of 27 out of 28. Now in the article, they talked about different things, uh, issues with phantom braking, driving on the highway, full self driving, not being ready or reliable, uh, some of the recalls that they had. They're quick to point out some of the problems that Tesla has, manufacturing issues, panel gaps, etc. But in reality, that's not unique to Tesla. Every car that I've ever driven, every car company that I've ever seen a vehicle that they make, I can say that none of them are perfect. There's certainly no other EV out there that gives you the driving experience of a Tesla, but in general, you're not gonna get a perfect manufactured car. Now, I will say that some of the vehicles that have been around for a lot longer than Tesla, 100 years plus, Ford, GM, Dodge, they've been making the same vehicle over and over again for over 100 years, so their manufacturing processes are probably a little bit better. It's not that you won't get any panel gaps, but as far as paint defects, uh, large panel gaps, things like that, it just didn't seem to come about, or at least it wasn't mainstream until Tesla. So you can say that maybe it's not something that you're considered, but reliability issues are not unique to Tesla. Recalls are not unique to Tesla. One of the advantages of Tesla is that they can do a lot of their recalls with over there updates. And that's not something that you're gonna get from any of the other auto manufacturers, certainly not a gas vehicle manufacturer. You just can't have that kind of thing. You just don't get it. So when Consumer Reports comes out and says that it's 27 out of 28, now they weren't just talking about EVs, they were talking about cars in general. It, it, you kinda had to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt because I really feel like there's maybe something on the outside coming into that rating, something outside that's kind of pressuring them to say that. Maybe they're trying to put more emphasis on some of the classic Audi manufacturers. Either way, I can happily say we've had our Tesla Model Y and we got it in 2020 for over a year. And I, never, I haven't had a single major issue with the car. Now I say major because we had a couple of little things, uh, some curb rash, bad driving on my, on my part. I had a flat tire, also probably bad driving on my part. Now I had minor, minor panel gaps. I combed the car over because I came into the situation with that skepticism that everybody does, thinking that the paint was gonna be terrible. I found two minor blemishes, but nothing that kind of stood out for me at all. And in fact, we wrapped the car, we ceramic coated it, did everything that we thought we needed to do or wanted to do. But in hindsight, the car, the paint, the, the body, the structure held up great. I haven't had a single problem with it this entire year. Now, I didn't experience phantom braking. I don't use the, you know, autopilot as much as some people do. I don't have the long commute or anything like that. Most of mine's in, in town, city driving, stuff like that. But I know that people that uh, go on the long highway rides, they talk about the phantom braking. I haven't been experiencing that, so I can happily say that's not a problem for me, but I know people do experience that. Now, I will say that Tesla has been working to change that, to help that, the automatic braking that people get, they call it phantom braking, uh, through a software update to fix that. But outside of that, I haven't had a single problem with the car. Now I've loved it from the beginning to the end. It's the best driving experience that I've ever had on a vehicle. And I can happily say that I can't picture myself going to another vehicle as my daily driver. If forever I decided to change from the Tesla Model Y into something else. So that's something that says something in itself right there. I've experienced other vehicles before and I don't want to go back. In fact, when I'm not driving my Tesla, I kind of miss it. It's one of those odd feelings that you don't get with everything else. I can happily say the technology of the car at the height of any technology I've ever seen in any vehicle. And as far as I know, there's no other vehicle that compares to it. Even the other EVs that are trying to copy some of the Tesla styling and design on the inside don't come near the technology that the Tesla has. Now, 
a real minimalistic interior by design. However, you do have the infotainment system that has games and YouTube and videos and all this entertainment features that you can do while you are supercharging, while you're charging the car up. Now, that kind of brought me into a couple other things. The Consumer Report came out, Car and Driver rated the car, different things like that. And this is all on the heels or at the forefront of all these other EVs entering into the market between Volkswagen and Porsche and uh, Chevy and Ford with the Lightning and the, the Mach-E. Well, how do they compare? So that's one of the things that might be threatening Tesla, that might be putting them on as a competition. I, for one, am happy that it's there. I want Tesla to kind of stay on their heels. I want them to continue to be moving forward, continue to be innovating, developing, creating the software. And I feel like you get comfortable if you're number one for too long. So I'm happy that they're out there. But I will say, as far as competition, I would probably put asterisks around it. Just in general, they may be an EV, like Tesla. However, you're, they don't come even close to the range that you get with Tesla. And then on top of that, Without that range that you have, you don't have the supercharging network. The supercharging network could be compared to say PlugShare, Electrify America, anything like that. However, nothing charges nearly as fast as what, how Tesla charges. So if you are going on a long road trip in your Mach-E, you're gonna be sitting for 45 minutes at a PlugShare waiting for it to charge up versus 20 minutes in a Tesla. And that time is something that you don't get back. That, that time is something that you're, you're using in your mind to compare what it would be to take the trip in a gasoline vehicle with a gas station on every corner, that sort of thing. You don't spend 45 minutes at a gas station typically. You're there for maybe 10 minutes at the most, and that's if you get a snack. So these are all things that kind of come into play, and I'd say that any of these EVs that are, that are quote-unquote competitors of Tesla, they have a lot longer to go than they're advertising than they're making you think. The, none of them, as far as I know, other than Chevy and maybe some of the other uh, Honda, Ionic, have production at scale, certainly not near what Tesla does, but the Mach-E, the Ford Lightning isn't even here yet, the Liv Rivian RT isn't even here yet. You know, things like that that they talk about, the Lucid Air, you know, unless you got $170,000 to buy for it, you're not gonna get one. So things like that, they're not produced on scale, they're not for the general public. Now, not to say that Tesla Model Y is cheap, because it's not, it's getting up there in the, in the lines of a luxury vehicle. However, it's something that's produced on scale. You just don't see that with the other auto manufacturers, certainly not the other EVs. Now, Tesla alone is having problems with manufacturing, just like everybody else is. You know, the fact they're sold out up into the second quarter of next year. You order a Tesla Model Y right now, and they completely took off the expected date delivery on the website, and now it just says, coming. You'll get it eventually. I know when we ordered ours, it took six months six months to get it. It's a hard pill to swallow for some people, but if you can wait, I guarantee you it'll be worth the wait. It's the best driving experience I've ever had with any, any vehicle, and I'll say that again and again and again, because it's just fantastic. Now, even with Consumer Reports saying that the Model Y is a 28 out of, or 27 out of 28 in reliability, it's not stopping people from buying it. It certainly didn't stop me. And I can say that they've sold, they sold over 500,000 vehicles last year. No, no, that's not all Model Y, but that's Model Y, Model 3, and the Model Y came out last year. And then this year is no different. They're on the heels of over 400,000 with almost five months to still report at the time that those numbers came out. So they're easily going to eclipse the numbers that they had last year. And this is with supply shortages, with chip shortages, with delays, everything like that. So it's it's an indication that they are still an extremely popular car, the Model 3 and the Model Y. In fact, Car and Driver put the number one best-selling, highest-rated vehicle in the EV space being the Tesla Model Y and closely behind it being the Model 3 based on sales. The Tesla Model Y eclipsed the Model 3 in sales last year, so it wouldn't surprise me if it continues to move forward like that. But either way, it's been a great drive. It's been a great, fantastic experience so far, over a year with hopefully many more years to come. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about some of the, the challenges that they're facing, some of the challenges from competitors, whether or not you think they're real or maybe we should take those quotes away. But either way, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, week, month so far. You're able to jump into this holiday season with a little bit of a smile on your face and that you're staying safe out there. Thanks for watching, everybody.